comes the dawn of what has become an institution in the world of sport. For 15 years, an event has been held taking some of the best athletes in the world, placing them on an equal basis to see who truly is the champion. Over the years, some of the greatest names in the annals of athletics have put themselves to the challenge, but few have come out on top. And today, this is it. The finals of the superstars on NBC. Ten great athletes have survived the rigors of the preliminary rounds to qualify for a shot at the coveted title of champion superstars. Making the cut from the first preliminary, Herschel Walker of the Dallas Cowboys led the field in overall points with an impressive performance that included a win in the 100-yard dash. 1986 Rookie of the Year, Todd Worrell of the St. Louis Cardinals took two by sea with wind and swimming and rowing. Heisman Trophy winner Vinny Testaverde proved that it's all in the arm by taking top honors in tennis and a second in rowing to qualify. And Roger Craig of the San Francisco 49ers pressed, pulled, and pedaled his way to the final. In the second preliminary, Chicago Bear Willie Galt swept the field, finishing first in three events and setting a new superstar's record in the obstacle course. And Greg Foster, holder of the world record in the high hurdles, showed what it takes to be a success with victories in the basketball, bowling, and bicycle events. 1985 Superstars champion Mark Gastineau of the New York Jets muscled his way to the final, scoring wins in weightlifting and rowing. Triathlete Scott Tinley won the half mile, as well as placing second in tennis and third in swimming. Base stealing champion Vince Coleman of the St. Louis Cardinals showed he has the right stuff with a solid all-around performance. And when qualifier Daryl Green was unable to participate in the final, Gary Anderson of the San Diego Chargers secured the last berth with second place honors in the 100-yard dash and obstacle course competition. And so the stage is set and the challenge is issued once again. It's the Superstars Final today on NBC Sports World. brilliance of Miami in the sun is in sharp contrast to the grim determination of today's Superstars finalists. On the shoreline of Miami Beach, the Eden Rock Hotel, the opening site for today's finals. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Don Cricky. It is warm, breezy, and sunny in Miami Beach, Florida, just like they like it. A standout field of superstar athletes has now gone through the preliminaries, and the field has been cut to an Elite Ten, who today begin the finals of the Superstars 1987. Pro football standouts, Herschel Walker and Willie Galt stood out in the preliminaries. So did the world indoor record holder in the hurdles, Greg Foster. For more on the field, let's go to Ahmad Rashad and Jimmy Cephalo. All right, thanks, Don. You know, Jimmy, this is a time that the competition becomes very serious. All that down to have fun, the camaraderie, all that stuff goes out the window. Now these guys are really serious. Anybody impressed you in the preliminaries? Oh, the most impressive part of the preliminaries for me was Herschel Walker running a 937 in sneakers on a very hard track without training for it. That was very impressive. How about Willie Galt? He was a little bit upset. He runs a 9-4 and says, I feel slow. Well, and also in the uh, the obstacle course, Willie was very impressive when he set the record by completely hurdling the high jump bar. <laughs> I, I, I only dream about that. All right, we're talking about these two guys, Walker and Galt. Evidently, they must be the favorites. Oh, I think so. I think Willie Galt and Herschel Walker have to be the favorites. But let's not forget Todd Worrell. Here's a baseball pitcher and a reliever as well coming in and showing some of the athletes like Herschel and Willie Galt that he's for real. Well, you know, the last couple of years I've picked Willie Galt to win the whole thing, and uh, I promised him this year that I wouldn't jinx him and pick him this year, but I thought about it, and I got to go with Willie Galt. All right, I think Herschel's going to win it. I was really impressed by him. We will find out soon. There are ten events. Each athlete has chosen seven of these ten to compete in. The competition begins with swimming and concludes with the obstacle course. A first place finish will be worth ten points, second place seven points down to one point for fifth. Each point is worth $100. The overall winner will receive bonus money of $15,000, second place $10,000, third place $5,000. The superstar swimming record is held by Olympic diving champion Greg Louganis in action here in 1986 when he turned two laps of the pool in just over 23 and a half seconds. Jimmy Cephalo is with two contenders today, Todd Worrell and Mark Gastineau. Greg Louganis has set them up they'll be going after. 
All right, Todd, uh, in the preliminaries, you were the fastest swimmer by three seconds over the second place uh, finisher, which was Mark Gaston. A big advantage for you today. Yeah, well, I, I got to have this event. This is, uh, this is my big day, and uh, some of these guys uh, come back in the sprinting and the lifting and where I'm not going to uh, participate, so I've got to nail this one down. All right, and Mark, uh, you didn't swim against Todd the first time around in the preliminary. Now against the best competition, will I make you swim faster? Well, it's gonna. I'm already aware that he is three seconds faster, so I've got to get off the uh, blocks as quick as I can and not have a slow start and try and knock a couple of the other guys off balance with my wake. <laughs> Big Mark's the force in the pool, 6'5", 265. He's like Jaws 3 in the water. Another contender today is Scott Tinley, world triathlete champion who swims a lot and does it very well. Now let's meet the field. Here's Roger Craig from the San Francisco 49ers. He'll be swimming in lane two. Big Mark Gastineau is in lane three, a very fine swimmer. Todd Worrell was the best in the preliminary rounds in swimming, the relief pitcher from the St. Louis Cardinals. There is Scott Tinley. He'll be in lane five. And Vince Coleman is a new starter. He did not swim in the preliminary round. We'll see what he can do in the finals. And this is a sprinter's race. It's only 50 yards, two laps of the 25-yard pool. If it went on for much longer, a couple of miles maybe, Scott Tinley would be the definite favorite. But I think here it'll come down between Gastineau and the pitcher, Todd Worrell. It is Gastineau and Worrell moving out smartly down the middle of the pool. This race is often won on the turn, and Todd Worrell is excellent at the flip turn. It could be the difference. He has a good one here. And he increased his lead quite a bit over Mark Gastineau on the turn. This could come down to a battle for second place. It looks like Worrell's going to run away with it. No one here is a threat for Olympic gold next year in Seoul, Korea, but Todd Worrell's not bad as he hits the line first, wins the swimming event. It's a battle for second. Looks like Gastineau gets second, and Tinley comes in third, or is it Roger Craig? We'll see. It was very close for third. There's the winner, Todd Worrell, Mark Gastineau second. Let's take a look at that battle for third place. You're right down the bottom part of the screen. It's Roger Craig of the San Francisco 49ers. Up top, Scott Tinley. And that left arm of Roger Craig just touches in front of Tinley, and he pulls third place because of it. A second slow motion look shows that Roger Craig does indeed get there to finish third. Now here's Ahmad with the winner. You, you are really putting the rest that baseball players are not all around athletes because you're really doing well. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm happy with my uh, points from the first days, and uh, I think if things uh, work out right here, I might sneak in. All right, good luck to you. The deciding moment in the race for Todd Worrell came on the turn. He executes a perfect flip turn and really pulls away here from Mark Gastineau to go on to win the race. Gastineau's turn was something quite less than what he wanted. You're going to have to teach me how to do a flip turn. Yeah, that flip turn is what it all. You guys were even till you got down there, and he flipped around. All of a sudden, he was like a couple lengths ahead of you. I went to the bottom. I flipped. <laughs> I flipped to the bottom. Well, you, that's not the way you're supposed to do it, Mark. I know I'm on. All right, well, you get it together. I'm still proud of you. Thank you. Meanwhile, for Vince Coleman, who's first on the base paths, he was last in the pool, and he wants to talk to Ahmad about it. Where's Ahmad? Uh, isn't the last guy supposed to be interviewed? Yes, he is, and, and I'm here, and this is my interview. Actually, it's not an interview. I just want to give you some information. Okay. Stay away from water. Well, I have, <laughs> I have waves. I thought that relates with water, so I no, thought no. that can pull me through. No, those but... waves only make me see sick. <laughs> This did get himself one point for fifth. Todd Worrell, the event winner, gets ten points, seven for Gastineau, and on down. Next up, the basketball competition, new to the superstars this year. Back at Miami Beach, this is Don Crickey with Ahmad Rashad and Jimmy Cephalo. The next event, basketball, coming up. Here's Ahmad with the rules. Thanks, Don. The court is broken into five areas. For a basket made from each area, points are awarded. One point closer to the basket, five points furthest from the basket. The athlete can't shoot from the same area twice in a row. Now, the object is to score as many points as you can in 60 seconds. In the preliminary round, the best shooter was a Penn State linebacker, Shane Conlon, who scored 23 points in the allotted 60 seconds. Shane, however, had problems in some of the other events. He didn't qualify for the Superstars final. Now let's meet the first group, ready to fill it up if they can. Willie Galt from the Chicago Bears. And from the St. Louis Cardinals, Vince Coleman. Down a couple of legitimate speedsters. Both of these guys have uh, experience on the track, and I find that when guys spend a lot of time on the track, they usually have no touch when it comes to shooting a basketball, as shown by Willie Galt throwing up there trying to break the back of the backboard. 
We saw athletes hitting a lot of iron and glass, but not much net in the preliminaries. And it's quite apparent these two guys don't play basketball for a living. Although Coleman's starting to fill it up a mod. He's really shooting very well. Oh, golf with a nice bank shot. They're pretty even right now. Uh-oh, now, here comes the real Willie Galt. <laughs> if he misses the entire basket. 30 seconds. Real Vince Coleman looking at that free throw line. Down yeah, now to about 20 seconds to go. 60 ticks of the clock. Get all you can in that time. Vince Coleman ahead on points. You know, it, it can be dangerous trying seconds. to compete in this competition with these guys missing the entire basket every now and then. Getting down to the stretch. Vince Coleman hits another from the three-point range. He likes that green line. He's going right back and... Now the whistle blows before he got that shot away. He wants it to count. He will not. He did get 19 points, though, at Judd Signal. A couple of top football players are ready to shoot in group two. Here's Roger Craig from the 49ers. And college football's top quarterback last season, the Heisman Trophy winner from Miami of Florida, Vinny Testaverde. You know, Don, I was talking to Roger before this competition. I said, Roger, don't panic. It's just like when you were young and you were shooting shots out in the backyard up against the garage. He said, I didn't have a garage. <laughs> <laughs> the basketball rim is wide enough in diameter, 19, 18 inches, for two balls to go through at the same time. It's not working here. And now Vinny Testaverde moves away. He's a good outside shooter and said beforehand he was going to look for some of those long-range bombers. We'll see if he goes to them. So far, neither player is getting much through. Well, I think he's got a nice style about him. He, he shoots with a lot, of, <laughs> a lot of force. 30 seconds. Then he finally gets something down. He's going to have to hit some long shots to pile up some points. Stick on that two-point range. 15 seconds. And 15 seconds puts a lot of pressure on you. That's when you really start rushing, and you miss the easy shots like Roger's doing. You're missing the one and two-pointers. Then he let him fly with that five-point number. He knocks it down just before the buzzer. So, Vinny Testaverde wins it, scoring 22 points, just one point off the superstar record. And Roger Craig scores 15 points, and I think Vinny's showing all of us just how good of a well-rounded athlete he is. Vinny was, of course, the object of enormous media attention during his senior year at Miami of Florida. It was a heavy burden for a young man, and much more of that attention is ahead for him. He's going to be the number one player selected in the next NFL draft, and he talked with him out about his future and the pressure. You know, the dream for many young football players is to grow up and be a college star and maybe one day win the Heisman Trophy. Well, Vinny Testaverde had that dream and it made it all come true. But Vinny, I think you're learning that to be a big star, all of a sudden there's things you have to give up. One is your privacy. Well, that is one thing. There's, there's a lot of things, like you said, uh, sacrifice, being away from your family. There's a lot of time you got to put in uh, going to school and, and high school, college and uh, meetings. And, and it's really, you have two jobs in, in college. Uh, that's what it feels like anyway. Uh, being away from your family is tough, and then when you want to go out to get a bite to eat, people, are, you know, come up to you and, and very generous ask you for, for your autograph, and uh, sometimes you just like to have some privacy and, and uh, just go out to eat and have a nice quiet meal and leave instead of sign, staying there signing autographs for a half hour. It's not really the pressure of being a star. It's just sort of the inconvenience sometimes because people read about the, the legend of Vinny Testaverde and they never really get to know the person. I think people at home, um, they think that uh, that goes along with the role they play is sign, you know, that you have to sign autographs, and it really doesn't. Some people act different. Uh, I try and do as many as I can and make everybody happy because it makes me feel good that they recognize me and uh, they like me as a player. Another thing I think being a star is people, everything that they read, they never really get to know you personally. They read things about the things you do and, and things you say, but that's all pretty much hype and hoopla, and that's not really you. Uh, that's true. You know, it, they, a lot of people blow it out of proportion, but we're just like them. Uh, we live uh, our lives just like anybody else, and we put on our pants the same way they do. And one of the neat things is the only way you get away from that pressure is when you're playing ball. It's one of the few times that all that other stuff doesn't matter. You can go out and just play, do what you do best. Uh, that's true. You know, you go out and... Uh, me being the quarterback, I'm in charge out there on the field, and uh, I get to tell everybody what I want to do, and uh, I don't have to really listen to anybody else except for my coaches, and uh, they really never gave me a hard time about anything, so that makes it more the better. Well, your senior year at Miami, the last time I talked to you was just before the Fiesta Bowl, and I mean, you were being pulled every way but loose. That had to be, that had to be very disconcerting. 
Well, I started thinking about, you know, uh, the perfect season, the ending to a perfect season, winning the national championship. And, uh, you know, it made it tough because uh, of the pressure, the amount of pressure was, that was there. And people were coming up to me saying, uh, I have a great game. This is putting the pressure on my shoulders when it really didn't need to be there because we have so much talent on our team that uh, we could have won with anybody having a great game. You know, the thing that's really impressed me since I've been watching you play is your close relationship with your family it seems to be that that's a very close-knit group and that's the thing in your life that keeps you down to earth that definitely keeps me down to earth and it keeps me going and keeps, gives me the drive that i need to go out and play every week um you know you not only want to do good for yourself but for them too because you know how supportive they've been of you and uh, you just want everybody to be happy testaverde family is surely happy with vinnie's new contract now we come to the next group, and in it's Scott Tinley, the world-class triathlete. We'll see what he can do with the basketball. We know from the preliminary round, the man shooting with him, Greg Foster, is a very fine basketball player, demonstrated excellent skills. Tremendous leaper also. Ready to go, and they're going to fire long range to start off. At least Foster is, and he bangs it. Scott Tinley being very careful. He's taking his time, trying to rack up them one and two pointers. Scott's got a lot of basketball experience. He played in a half-court game once. <laughs> he said, but he did grow up in a neighborhood where they did have mitts on the basket. I'll tell you one thing. Foster, I don't think, missed anything yet. Oh, he's getting fancy now. You see that one? Down to 30 seconds. Greg Foster looking to get all he can. So Scott Tinley, but he's not getting much. Looks like Scott's he's throwing up a medicine ball. <laughs> he's, that ball does look a little heavy, this guy, does Foster doing very well. Superstars record, 23 points set by footballer Shane Conlon in a preliminary round. Best score in the final round so far is 22 points. There's the whistle. That last shot did not go. Greg Foster did very well, though had 21 points. Scott Tinley somehow got 12. <laughs> yeah, but he tried hard. He gave it a good try. He did that. The leader is still Vinny okay. Testaverde on the left. He scored 22 in his 60 seconds. Now we come to the next group. Here's big Todd Worrell, National League Rookie of the Year last season, a relief pitcher from the St. Louis Cardinals, a lot of size, 6'5", 210. And Herschel Walker, who surprised a lot of people with his dexterity and ability to shoot a basketball in the preliminary round. Todd Worrell liked to bomb from the outside. He's been doing that in practice the whole time and did it very well during the preliminary rounds. <laughs> <There's> Herschel. <laughs> classic take nine yeah, for, steps and don't bounce. That's right. Forget about the dribble. <laughs> Herschel's just a tucking a ball under his arm and going with it. You put it on the field, you're in trouble. That's right. Yeah, he didn't do too much dribbling last year in Dallas, did he? <laughs> Burrell starting to ease on out, looking to hit that long shot. He's got a good one. You know, Herschel's bombing a man pretty yeah. nice, too. Yeah, but we've only got one backboard. He better stay in close. That's the major problem in this. You get a lot of good shots that get knocked away by your opponent's ball. Herschel Walker is one of the most impressive athletes that I have ever <laughs> seen in any sport at any time. And, you know, he's so well-developed uh, with his upper body. He doesn't do any weightlifting. He does sit-ups all the time. He does push-ups constantly. Just take a look at his physique. He's built better than any athlete out there. Jimmy, you don't think he's got some weights hidden in his garage somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> he's not going to tell us about it if he does. There's the whistle. Those shots don't count if they go, but they both scored well. Todd Morrell finished with 21 points. Herschel Walker had 16. Todd Worrell, a very smooth athlete. Watch this release here. Nice, got his elbows together, nice rotation on the ball, and right through the hole. Now, you had a pretty good day. The other day you said you only had six points in the preliminary, but you shot a lot better today. Yeah, I struggled. I kind of got out of my game plan the first time around, and I tried to stay in close, you know, where the ball doesn't ricochet off, and still missed some close ones I should have had, but I was a lot more pleased. Herschel, you pound from the outside pretty well, too. Oh, uh, yes, I could shoot a little bit. I've been getting tired now, but I'm about to come back and gear myself up and get ready to go. All right, good luck the rest of the way. Good productions by both. Worrell with 21 points, Herschel with 16, but they both trail our leader, Vinny Testaverde, who hit for 22. If there's a game that Gary Anderson of the San Diego Chargers can't play, we haven't found it yet. There's Gary, ready to show what he can do with a basketball, just a splendid all-around athlete. And he is grouped in this fifth pairing with Mark Gastineau, who's built close to the basket. 
at almost 6'6 in height. You know, Dan Fouts told me that Gary Anderson was a horrible marbles player. That's about all, then. How about that to open it up? But he had a garage where he grew up because he hit that shot pretty well. Pumped in the five-pointer, the one-pointer, now the three-pointer. Notice how Gary Anderson stays as far away from Mark Gastineau as possible. That's from playing football against him, I guess. Very intelligent athlete, I call that. That's true. That's very true. <laughs> hey, the way Gary's going here is news when he misses. He's filling it up. Left-handed, too. Look at that. Does he realize he, that he, he can touch the rim? It's okay. He's hit everything straight through the hole. 22 is the number to beat. Vinny Testaverde has that. You're right, Don. I have not seen him miss with any one time. Hey, he finds the spots where Gastineau is not. He hasn't gotten his ball knocked away very often. Big number, though, is when you go out and hit that five-pointer like he opened with. Gives you a lot of confidence when you hit it off the bat, too. He's hit quite a few threes, too. <laughs> Whistle blows. Gary Anderson with a very impressive showing. The indication early is that he is now the leader. We'll get his official total. He gets 28 points officially. Here's Gary Anderson opening things up. Long range artillery. He opens with a five point bomb. Gary, congratulations. 28 points on the day, and you wind up with 10 big ones in the competition. Uh, that's good. You know, I came out the first time, and I kind of. Messed up, I think I only had nine, so I already worked on yesterday and I paid off today. Oh, so you did practice a little bit. Oh, I had to, you know, I had that bad out in the first thing, and I showed up at the practice. All right, congratulations. Gary Anderson gets it done, 28 points, and he wins basketball. Ten points for that victory, Vinny Testaverde second, Foster and Worrell tied for third. And after two events, Todd Worrell still has the overall lead with 13 points. Anderson now second with his victory in basketball, Gastineau and Testaverde follow. The power people are coming next in weightlifting. Back in South Florida, we're at the finals of the 1987 Superstars competition. It's close. Todd Worrell's the leader with 13 points after two events. Welcome back to Miami Beach, Florida. I'm Don Crickey as now we come to one of the feature events of the Superstars finals, the weightlifting competition. Three pro football standouts are favored here, Mark Gastineau, Herschel Walker, and Roger Craig. But in the past, we've had major upsets. Coordination and quickness count as much as sheer strength in getting the weight up. They start at 200 pounds. It builds in 20-pound increments till they get to 260. Then it goes up by 10 until one man, the Superstars weightlifting champion, is left standing. And that could very well be Mark Gastineau taping up here today. Back in 1982, Gastineau established an all-time superstars record in weightlifting. Here he is. Five years ago, there are 327 and a half pounds on the bar, and he gets it up as his mom cheers him on. Mark Gastineau setting the record that still stands. We join the weightlifting with the bar set at 220 pounds. That's a lot more than Vince Coleman of the St. Louis Cardinals weighs, but... Vince is plenty strong. And he gets it up without problem. He's the kind of an athlete that I think would have excelled in many sports. I would have loved to have seen him try to play wide receiver in the NFL. A lot of quickness, a lot of strength, obviously a great deal of speed. Here's another man with tremendous all-around athletic ability. Herschel Walker, now of the Dallas Cowboys. He weighs 220. He's stepping up to a bar loaded up with 220 pounds. It should be no contest. The bar's not going to win this one. <laughs> And he's got a lot of endurance as well, played in the USFL, then the NFL. A lot of strength, doesn't get injured very often. And that's the reason why, a lot of strength. And he says he never lifts weights, but I think he has that garage, as Ahmad mentioned earlier, somewhere in the back hills of Georgia where he's got a lot of weight hidden away. Gary Anderson. Here comes Gary Anderson. He only weighs 185, but is he strong? Bar 220 pounds. Gary Anderson, also a product of the U.S. Football League, where in two seasons in that league, he scored 42 touchdowns before now standing out for the Chargers at San Diego. And no problem for 185-pound Gary Anderson with the bar at 220. Next up to the bar at 220 pounds. Now here comes the favorite, Jimmy. Mark Gastineau stepping up at a very lightweight for him, 220. Yeah, all the lightweights are gone and finished now. This is 100 pounds less than his record here at the Superstars at 327 and a half. 
He's a showman, though. He cleans the area off. He's got the color-coordinated suit on. He wore sunglasses during the preliminary. Doesn't need them today, though. I don't think that'll much matter at this weight. Red lenses to Bodie had. He's ready, though, as big Mark Gastineau. He does have one disadvantage because of his great size, 6'5", and a long arm span. He's got to put the bar way up, but at 220 pounds, that should be a very limited problem. Gastineau gets the approving whistle at 220 and goes and gets ready for the next try. As Roger Craig will now step up. He's very strong. 220-pound runner from the San Francisco 49ers in the preliminary. He put up 300 pounds, did Roger Craig. He's got that great leverage, though. He's built perfectly for this kind of a lift. Uh, good, strong legs, a big upper body, and has little trouble at 220 pounds. Now moves to good left for Roger Craig. Meanwhile, Mark Gastineau wanted it to be known that he's dedicating this competition to the late wife of his good friend Jim Ringo. Barr is now set at 240 pounds. Vince Coleman, who led off this final round, will try again now with a 20 additional pound weight on. He's serious now. He put the hat on. A little concentration before he goes up. 240 pounds is a lot for a guy who weighs 180. It's a lot for a guy who weighs 240. <laughs> That's too much for Vince Coleman. It was a lot for the spotters on the side. He nearly speared the one on the right. <laughs> So Vince is out of the weightlifting at 240 pounds. Herschel Walker will be next to go as we see the every ounce effort of Vince Coleman, but not enough to pump 240 up. Well, the valiant effort. But you know what these guys here? They can't steal bases like you do. Well, that's right. I'm going against up against Mark Gassino and Roger Craig. Here, Anderson, these big football guys, I'm just a little puny outfielder trying to steal bases make a living. <laughs> and steals quite a few, I might add. <laughs> And a hundred or more the last two years. There's nobody better at it. Herschel Walker. Now big Herschel Walker steps up to the bar with 240 pounds on it. Look at the size of his neck. His neck is so big it extends out past his ears. He's not going to have any trouble running anybody over in the open field or getting this weight up, I don't think. And Herschel never lifts weights. <laughs> There's his wife, Cindy. Who told him not to get into the weightlifting. Why? So she's his wife, and she didn't want him to get hurt. I don't think he could hurt Herschel with a ball bat. <laughs> <laughs> Gary Anderson, just 185 pounds, going for 240. Look at that. Good luck. <laughs> He's a fantastic athlete. Wife Ollie cheering on Gary. Next up at 240 pounds. I'll never get that flip know. he did in the end zone. I'm sure everybody's seen that. You know, I asked him about it, and he said the reason he did it, he was in the air, and he didn't want to come down on his shoulder or on the ball, so he figured the only thing he could do is a 360. He did it very well. He did. He jumped over Bud Brown, the defensive back for the Dolphins. Bud tried to submarine him, and the only thing he <laughs> saw was the flying feet of Gary Anderson. Good left. Mark didn't have any trouble with that. None at all at 240 pounds. Now, coming up to the bar, 240 is Roger Craig, a consistent 300-pound lifter if need be. Best technique of the group. It's part of his workout, though. He, he uh, doesn't lie about that. Uh, he's excellent. The leg thrust starts a successful lift. The arm thrust follows, and Roger Craig does it to perfection at 240 pounds. Coordination and timing is important as sheer physical strength in this event. Now, as a beautiful sailboat cruises on by at Miami Beach, the bar goes to 260 pounds. Herschel Walker leads the field into this weight group. I worry about these setters here to take the weight off the bar. I think that maybe that's what Cindy's thinking also, but look how small they are compared to Herschel. Yeah, I have a feeling if one of the bars goes over the backside, they're never going to be able to hold it up. <laughs> And Kershaw will never lift weights. Never lifted a weight until right the day. And today he's trying to lift all the weights. I understand there was some discussion last night as to whether or not Herschel could lift weights or not. He said he had to ask you. Is that true? Yes, and I told him to be very careful because I didn't think he could do it. Yeah, but he put that up pretty easy. easy. I know. I feel a lot better now. All right. There you go. <laughs> Well, Herschel, he says he doesn't lift weights, but he told me he grew up in the country throwing bulls around. <laughs> That's right. Lateral and hogs. I think he's throwing some bull around when he told us he doesn't lift any weights. <laughs> 
<laughs> Gary Anderson at 260 pounds. This is now 75 pounds more than he weighs, and he can't get it up. So Gary Anderson goes out at 260. Not too bad. You gave it a good try. I guess so. You know, that's the same spot I've been holding up for all, I guess, for all my life. I'm 260. <laughs> Today. Yeah, but 260. I'm t I couldn't pick up 160. Well, you by 10, I ain't gonna say it. No. <laughs> <laughs> Our next lifter at 260 pounds from the New York Jets, Mark Gastineau. Mark Gastineau, who is as dedicated to physical fitness as he is to football, comes to the bar 260 pounds. He was troubled by an injury to his left knee during the last season. He had arthroscopic surgery on it and wearing a protective brace. See, the weight is up now as Gastineau struggling already before putting it up, but then a good smooth thrust, and Gastineau is clean at 260. The training process is a year-round event for all of the athletes here. This is not a seasonal thing where Mark Gastineau will work out for four or five months. It's 12 months around the year. In fact, he and most of the athletes just uh, take a week off or so like a vacation and go on with the continued process. Like we used to do. Yeah, like we used to do. <laughs> yeah. We kind of reversed the process. Worked out a week. <laughs> Roger Craig, very systematic in his setup. Technique is flawless. And effortlessly, he puts it up. 260 pounds to advance to the next weight. But it all gets a lot tougher. The bar weight is going to go up when we return to the weightlifting at the 1987 Superstars. 1987 superstars, the bar and weightlifting is up to 300 pounds now, and three competitors remain. Herschel Walker, Mark Gastineau, and Roger Craig. Herschel Walker set to step up to 300 pounds now. He shouldn't be real nervous here because he doesn't know what it's like to lift this much weight because he's never lifted weights. <laughs> <laughs> but I bet you he found a bowl that was 300 pounds on occasion. He didn't get those muscles playing checkers, though. <laughs> no problem for Herschel Walker. 300 pounds is up successfully. Yeah, I never lifted weights either. Well, you know, I'm from the country. I was uh, 16 before I realized my name wasn't Get Wood and stuff. So, uh, you know, I got to get out here and work. Like I said, I'm building a new house. I need money. Well, it looks like it. You work. You lifting weights like you need some money. All right. Here's Mark Yesterday now coming to the bar at 300 pounds. You know, there are two schools of thought here. You can lift weights all your life and look like Mark Gastineau, or you can never lift weights and look like Herschel Walker. <laughs> Is that easy? We all look like Herschel. <laughs> you mean I don't? <laughs> Tough go for Mark Gastineau, but he gets an approving whistle again. He is clean at 300 pounds, barely. Now Roger Craig will try to complete it. And advance to the next round as Herschel Walker and Mark Gastineau have both succeeded at 300. There's really more pressure on Mark Gastineau than there is on Roger Craig or Herschel Walker. He's expected to win this competition. But it, it, it's got to make you rethink your workout program. When, when Herschel just walks up there and picks it up, and you think about all the hours you spent in the gym. He was getting all that wood when he was in Georgia, though. <laughs> Roger Craig, who in 1985 became the first player in NFL history to rush for over 1,000 yards and catch passes for over 1,000 yards with the 49ers. He was troubled by injuries last season. Didn't miss any games, but he really had a bad hit for about six weeks. Finally got over it. And as you guys were pointing out a bit earlier, when it comes to technique, no one's as good as Roger Craig lifting weights. He weighs about the same size as Herschel Walker, 6'1", 220. Craig is good at 300 pounds. He stumbled for just a second there. He was in danger of losing it over the backside. Would you also put those two spotters in danger? There you see him here. Watch him stumble just in the last second going back, but he had enough strength and had himself positioned well enough so he could control the weight. Now the bar goes to 310 pounds, and Herschel's next. 
No, I'm kidding. Three ten. Three ten. You gotta be kidding. Three ten. Three ten. That is 310 pounds. Our first. Mitchell a bit disbelieving that they let him to list 310 pounds. But he's ready to give it a go. I think he'll pull it out. Yeah, easy for her to say sitting over there in that chair. She's the one who didn't want him to lift last night. <laughs> You know, weightlifting is one of those sports that, see, you can't psych the bar out. No matter how much you look at it, stare at it, do all that breathing, it's not going to get any lighter. <laughs> <laughs> you can't talk to that bar. Herschel's struggling already, and he's not going to get there. That's okay, Bill. So Herschel Walker goes out of the competition at 310 pounds. Well, I see all that practice picking them cows have really helped you well, quite a bit. Well, I hope so, you know. Uh, I hope, uh, you know, uh, no one saw this with the Cowboys. I don't need to be in the weight room any more than I'm in right now. <laughs> so that was your whole reason for doing this, to show them that you're already strong. Yes, to show them that I can lift a little bit, you know, that I am working out during the off season and I'm getting myself ready and ready to uh, help the Cowboys go back to the playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> you hear this? These guys are giving you... <laughs> Our guest, you know, gets himself all cinched in now, ready to take a go at 310 pounds, a weight that Herschel missed at. Roger Craig will follow Gastineau. And I think by Herschel going out, it took a little bit of pressure off of Gastineau. Yeah, but Roger Craig can lift some weights, too. I think he'd rather lose to Craig than to lose to Herschel, who has never listed, lifted a weight. Those other players were calling Herschel Pinocchio. They said his <laughs> nose was growing fibbing about not lifting a weight. <laughs> It was tough. Mark Gastineau got there, though, so he's still in at 310 pounds. Now the pressure's on Roger Craig. Now, now, we're talking emotion now. That was a very good lift, Mark. Yeah, Herschel put the pressure on me. I'll tell you, for never lifting a weight, though, I still don't believe it. <laughs> I'm going to have to go to Dallas and check on that. That's I want right. to see if it's documented. <laughs> That's right. right Our final lifter at 310 pounds. Roger Craig. I heard that Herschel had a separate wing in that new house that he was putting his weights in. <laughs> All the bulls, either one. Roger Craig coming up to the bar at 310 pounds. He has succeeded at this weight in the preliminary round and in past superstar competitions, but it doesn't make it any lighter. Mark Gastineau could be the winner depending on what Roger Craig does with this attempt. So Mark Gastineau wins weightlifting as he hugs his trainer. Roger Craig and Herschel Walker go out of 310. Gastineau was successful, so he'll get 10 points for this lift. And Gastineau used the technique that Ahmad suggested to him, bowl on his neck, pushing up to the sky. And the lift is good. I tell you, they gave you, they gave you a run for your money. Look at this. Shaking. Yeah, but you know what? You, you've never lifted any weights in your life. It's just that natural strength that you have, like no, Urshel. All my life. I've just been <laughs> hanging around. I've never lifted any weights. I've never swam. I've never even played football. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure you've probably done a few push ups in the morning every now and then. Uh, that's all I do is just exercise. You know? <laughs> I'm telling you, three just uh, remar line. Three remarkable athletes. But you know what? You're the overall leader right now with 17 points. Looking good. Probably short lived. Let's go to the bowling, right? <laughs> Ten points that Mark Gastineau got for winning weightlifting did indeed give him the overall point lead. He has 17 points after three events. Worrell is second with 13. Gary Anderson third with 12. 1987 Superstars continues after this. With Ahmad Rashad and Jimmy Cephalo, this is Don Crickey back in Miami, Florida for the Superstars Finals. After three events, Mark Gastineau is now leading with 17 points. Tennis is the fourth event. Here's Ahmad with a report. Thanks, Don. After a series of one-set matches, the tennis final took place between Todd Worrell and Herschel Walker. Worrell beat Vinny Testaverde in the semifinal, and Herschel had to beat Scott Tenley and Willie Galt to reach the final. Now, this was match point. Herschel with a nice serve, and he comes in right behind it, just like John McEnroe. And he stays at the net like McEnroe. Well, he doesn't volley like McEnroe, but he does succeed in keeping Worrell at the baseline. There's a nice overhead. And Walker's showing some athletic ability, lots of it. Worrell hits it long, 
And it's a 6-4 victory for Herschel Walker, who picks up 10 points with this first place win. So let's check our standings for tennis. Todd Worrell had 7 points for second with Willie Galt, Benny Testaverde, and Scott Tenley picking up the remaining points. When the St. Louis Cardinals opened spring training recently, Todd Royal came to camp carrying the title of 1986 National League Rookie of the Year. Todd's career is moving fast, but he never forgets his responsibility as a role model for kids. I studied through my college career to be a youth pastor and to have a chance maybe to, to work in a church as a youth pastor and uh, influence some high school lives, uh, junior high. I was really interested in, in young people. It's, it's really been a, a good ministry for me and I think a, a chance to um, really be a positive impact on young people today. I think a lot of kids' uh, personality, their, their um, self-image gets pulled down and stepped on and uh, they begin to think themselves not important or not a good athlete or and they're not having fun at it. I felt I've always been at my best because I've been out there having fun. And even at this level, I mean, this is my life. This is what I'm trying to learn my, uh, earn my living at. And yet, for me, there's still a big element of having fun out here. And uh, I think, you know, if the day ever does come where uh, my whole motivation is out here to earn a certain amount of money, and that it becomes a total business for me, I, I definitely believe that uh, I'd have to step out of baseball because I really believe that having fun is, is a big part of uh, playing athletics. And he's having fun here at this superstar competition. He's now our new leader. Standings after four events, Todd Worrell leads it, followed by Mark Gassineau, Herschel Walker, Gary Anderson, and Roger Craig. Coming up, Rowan. championship round of the Superstars competition continues. At the moment, it is a three-man race, but lots of events left and maybe more surprises. This is Don Crookie at Miami Marine Stadium as we come to the halfway point of the Superstars finals. This is the rowing event. Unlike the preliminaries, the course here at Miami Marine Stadium is very good today. No choppy seas or wind. We have a surprise leader at this point, pitcher Todd Worrell of the St. Louis Cardinals, currently leading a former champion, Mark Gastineau. For more, let's go to Ahmad and Jimmy. Thanks, Don. Jimmy, you know, the guy that's really impressed me is Todd Worrell. He came down here, and his whole intent was to show the world that he's a great athlete, and he's done that. Yeah, he certainly has. He's performed well. Let's also not forget Herschel Walker and Vince Coleman. This thing is going to come down to the running events, which will take place later this afternoon, and there'll be a competition between Galt, Vince Coleman, and uh, Herschel Walker. I think those three people will really make a run for the title. Speaking of the running events, the highlight for me is going to be watching Willie Galt and Herschel Walker run that 100. Yeah, and Vince Coleman, if he can run 100 yards like he runs 90 feet... <laughs> It should be some race. All right, let's go to the rowing. And three rowers will be in heat one. That's Scott Tinley, outstanding triathlete. Mark Gastineau, who excels at rowing, has won this event in past Superstars finals. And Vinny Testaverde, a very impressive newcomer to the Superstars competition, will also row in this event. One of the few times Mark Gastineau did not win rowing was back in 1985. As we hearken back now and watch Jack Hacksaw Reynolds, the former 49er linebacker, rowing hard and rowing to a superstar record time, 31.59 seconds, just edging out Gastineau. The top three times qualify for the rowing final. And in this heat, Tinley, Gastineau, and Testaverde. That's the favorite Gastineau in the middle lane. The race here is definitely for second because Gastineau is so strong. And he's trying to just stay real smooth, stay down in the middle and get a nice good time. Bill Bryan once said he could never understand rowing, a sport where you sit down and go backwards to win. <laughs> but this is a tough one, and look at Testaverde put on a rush down, lane one. Gastineau is going to pull away, and now it's a battle for second between Scott Tinley and Vinny Testaverde as Mark Gastineau powers his way over the finish line to win this heat of rowing. His winning time of 34.77 seconds is well off the event record, but in all probability, good enough to get Mark into the finals of rowing. Testaverde's time, 36.69. Scott Tinley finished in 37.99 seconds. We'll be back with more rowing, but now the fifth event, which was held earlier, that's bowling, and here for a report is Jimmy Cephalo. Don, in the bowling competition at Classic Lanes, all ten athletes rolled a complete game. The top five scorers qualified for a three-frame bowl-off. The winner of each match would continue on in head-to-head -head competition. In match one, it was Gary Anderson versus Willie Galt, 
and nothing went right for Gary Anderson. After rolling a respectable 156, Gary just never found the pocket and finished with a three-frame score of 27. After bowling a 148 in the preliminary round, Willie Gold started on a roll. In the second Superstars competition, Willie had bowled well enough for a second-place finish. And today, his hook ball found the left side of the pocket enough times against Gary Anderson, and Willie won it 37 to 27. In the second match, with that victory, Willie moved along to meet Roger Craig, who had earlier rolled a 168. Willie admitted later that he had practiced for the bowling competition. The way his ball hooks, I would say that Willie had more than practice. He might have gotten some help from the pros. With this strike, Galt had a 35 to his credit. In the first superstar preliminary, Roger Craig had finished third in the bowling. Now Roger concentrates on bowling the same way he plays football, with a lot of determination. But determination wasn't quite enough for Roger on his final ball. He finished the three frames with a score of 33 to Galt's 35. Match three found Willie Galt going up against the brilliant base dealer of the St. Louis Cardinals, Vince Coleman. In the first game, Vince had rolled a 169. At this stage of the competition, Willie Galt's patented hook was beginning to falter. The pin action for Willie simply stopped in this match, and Willie finished with a 34. But Vince Coleman's style was more direct. Just roll the ball with speed and authority and let the pins fly around. Vince finished with back-to-back -back strikes and brought to a score of 44 and the win. In the championship match, it was time for Vince Coleman to go against the top qualifier, Greg Foster. In the second Superstars preliminary, Foster had won the bowling competition. In today's first game, Greg had bowled a 186 and could sense another bowling first. Nevertheless, Greg faltered in the final bowl-off and with an example like this, finished with a three-frame score of 29. Meanwhile, Vince Coleman had gained momentum. Vince kept charging in the final two frames, and with this strike, Vince had won the bowling 48 to 29 over Foster. Vince had possibly the best form of all the athletes. But like the pros, Vince's follow-through after the ball's release was extremely important. Of course, some cardinal body English helped a little bit too. Even though Willie Gall didn't win here, at least he passed along a few pointers to one of his little fans. While Willie Galt was giving some instruction, Mark Gassino was busy getting some. Her 76-year-old grandma, Jean Lohman. She's been giving instruction for over 40 years to the junior league. Looks like she has a new pupil. Okay, and you're going to go with your right foot first. Okay, let's go. You're going to go for the third arrow. Okay. Follow through. And that hand all the way out and up so your ball will get that resolution of a turn to carry those pins out. You want to scatter the pins. The winner of the bowling competition was Vince Coleman getting a big 10 points. Our standings after five events finds Todd Worrell the leader, Mark Gastineau second, followed by Herschel Walker and the rest of the field. Thanks, Jimmy. We're back now at Miami Marine Stadium to continue the rowing competition in this seat. Willie Galt will row. Also involved in this heat is Todd Worrell of the St. Louis Cardinals, and the all-around athlete from the San Diego Chargers, Gary Anderson, is also competing in this heat. Conditions are very good. There's no chop on the water, no wind, so we could have very good times. And, of course, the three best times in the heats will qualify for the rowing final. Willie Gold in the far lane, moving out quickly. Todd Worrell in the center lane distinguished himself in the preliminaries in rowing, and right now he is really putting the muscle to it as he takes the lead at about the halfway point. This is probably Gary Anderson's weakest to on. He doesn't have many weaknesses. You know, Willie Galt came down here, really, he practiced his event. This is the one he wanted to do very well in. What they're really rowing against is the clock. The three best times in the heat to make it to the finals of rowing. Worrell appears on his way to one of those best times. He is streaking at the moment. <laughs> All of a sudden, Gary Anderson's boat is going the wrong way. He's off course, Gary Anderson, and now Willie Gall is going to take second, but Worrell comes in with a good time. Todd Worrell finishing in 36.88 seconds. Gary Anderson in 43.94, and Willie Gall was at 42.74.
So Worrell looks in good shape to make the finals. In fact, right now, Mark Gastineau, Vinny Testaverde, and Todd Worrell have the three top times as we come to Heat 3. Good rowers in this one, too. There's one of them, Roger Craig from the 49ers. And he'll be going against a surprisingly strong athlete in all the events, the hurdler, Greg Foster. Roger Craig, who practiced with Hacksaw Reynolds, who's the record holder here in this event. There's the gun, two-man heat right here. And Roger Craig takes the lead. But watch Foster. He has a great ability to really get it going as the race wears on. And the most important thing is they're not racing against each other. They're racing against the clock. Three best times make it to the final heat. Right now, Gaston, Testaverde, and Worrell hold the three best times with two good rowers here and a very even performance. They're boat to boat. They must keep those boats straight down the course. As soon as the thing gets a little bit off course, that's when they run into a lot of problems. And that looks like it's happening a little bit to Greg Foster there. Roger Craig with the lead again now as they start to near the finish line. Roger Craig rows through. Foster right behind. Two very good times, though. They both did well and could be in the finals. We'll check the times. Let's now look at the replay, though, Ahmad. You know, every time I look at this boat race, it reminds me of what a disaster I was when I entered it. These guys are doing what I couldn't do. They're rowing strong all the way down the course and right through the finish line. That's so important in getting a good time. Those times, Ahmad, are good enough to get them in the final. Craig and Foster make it along with Mark Gastineau. The rowing final is next. With Jimmy Cephalo and Ahmad Rashad, this is Don Cricky back at Miami Marine Stadium at the Superstars Finals. We're getting set now for the final in the rowing competition. Three top men have qualified. 49er Roger Craig set to go in lane one. In the center lane is a very surprising athlete who's done quite well, Greg Foster, the silver medal winner in the hurdles at the 84 Olympic Games. And the man to beat has to be Mark Gastineau. His qualifying time was the best of the three finalists. All three have known some great moments as competitors. Roger Craig of the 49ers, though, had one game he just as soon forget. He put the wrong guy on the field. His quarterback, Joe Montana. I would have to say when I was a rookie, uh, we were in New England playing against the Patriots, and uh, I tripped uh, Joe Montana twice. And uh, he told me in the huddle, hey, you can't keep tri tripping me here. We're going to make the uh, TV blooper team if we do that. <laughs> <laughs> Once was enough, but... Twice now, and Joe's a little hot. Yeah, but I still don't see why Roger was embarrassed. Everybody saw Joe fall down. He ought to be embarrassed. <laughs> he was. <laughs> Set to go now. Roger Craig in the far lane. Foster in the middle. Mark Gastineau the favorite in the near lane. All three have a great ability to keep the boat in the center of the course, which is so important in getting a good time. Roger should seriously challenge Gastineau in this race because before the race, he said he wanted first place here. Gastineau might have a slight lead over Roger Craig at the moment. All three very much in the race. It can change quickly depending on if somebody goes off course. Great Foster attacking in that boat, huh? But having a little bit of problem with a straight line, which Gastineau and Craig are doing very well with. And again, Mark Gastineau rose to victory. He'll take the rowing competition. The second place finisher was Roger Craig. Greg Foster finished third. Well, that second place finish wasn't too embarrassing for Roger. I think he'll take those seven points. It certainly was not embarrassing him, Rod. He had a time of under 36 seconds, Foster under 37 seconds. Jimmy's with the winner. I think you were toying with those guys. Right at the end, he kept looking over. Why were you so interested in them? I was thinking about the bikes. <laughs> I've got to rest. In other words, you were that much better in the rowing competition. Don't say it like that. <laughs> Go ahead, you tell I me was what lucky. I was that much luckier. We had a good start. All right, what about the biking competition? You're now the overall leader, and it seems that going down the stretch, there's some events that uh, the smaller people in the running events are maybe more apt to, to win. Except for the 100-yard dash. I'm going to win that. Boy, this, this I got to see. So that'll do it for rowing, and 10 points go to Mark Gastineau for his victory. Roger Craig, 7 for second. Greg Foster, 4 for third. And now after six events, we have a new leader, Mark Gastineau with 27 points. He's six up on Todd Worrell. Coming up, the bike racing. Seven Superstars finals continues at Key Biscayne, Florida. The bike racing event is next, the seventh of 10 events. The record in this event was set 11 years ago when a powerful water ski champion, Wayne Grimditch, 
rode the half mile in a minute, 10 seconds and change, a record that stood now for going on 11 years. He blew away the field on a final lap. Wayne Grimditch, the winner that year in the bike race and the record setter. Today, Crandon Park is the site of the bike final. Again, it's two laps around a quarter mile track. The riders are ready. And so is the commissioner of the superstars, Bob McElwee, keeping a close eye on things. Let's go to Jimmy Cephalo. Mark, you're going against four other skinny little guys. The way I look at it, the only way you're going to win is to intimidate somebody. Maybe maybe do a Hulk Hogan, uh, ripping the shirt. You already got to start up here. You know, intimidation, that's the idea. Yeah, but if you can't get up to him, well, it's hard to intimidate him. You can intimidate starting line. That's the idea. I don't know if uh, I can reach all of them, though. That's oh, a big reach. If they look down here, they, I swear, you tear, tear the shirt, do something. It'll, it'll scare them. Well, why don't you get half of them? I'll take the other. Help no, me out. No, you're on your own, bud. You're on your own. I'm going to start there. Roger, just stay away from the bear. I heard you just said skinny. That's pretty good pump. Oh, thank you. Thank you. That's impressive. <laughs> Hope I can use it. <laughs> I think you better worry about the legs. Never mind the arms in this group. <laughs> all right, Greg, what's the strategy? Just go all out. Fall down and break your name. Have a nice day. Have a nice day. Okay. How about her? So what are you going to do? Well, you know, to be honest, I have the slightest idea. Uh -huh. Oh, wait a minute. I've been listening to this for a couple of, for, for all afternoon. You know, you're tired and slow and scared and frightened all these good athletes. Come on. You you, you, you got to be the odds on favor for this uh, thing. You know, it's sort of like uh, David and Goliath. And, you know, it's, it's tough. Which one are you? Well, I'm, I think I'm going to have to be David because there's some big guys here. And, you know, the only thing I can do is just go out and try to keep up. All right, pick me one Goliath. Uh, well, Mark. <laughs> you know, uh, I think Mark is. And, uh, you know. All right, get the big rock out in the slingshot and we'll work on it later. Now, here's we go. Vince Coleman. Boy, you seem so excited here. Did you sleep last night? Or? I didn't, I was nervous all day. You know, I got to compete against these guys here. And I've been nervous all night. I couldn't sleep. I've been up since 6 o'clock this morning. I'm ready to go. Let's go. You ready to start? I'm ready to start. All right, try not to fall asleep for the rest of the deal. Good luck the rest of the way. From boats to bikes, the superstars are ready to get there fast again. This is the fastest event of all, the bike race. Five riders set to go. Now, I made the point once before you guys laughed at me, but the red bikes are the faster bikes, and whoever wins this race, I guarantee you will be on a red bike. That's because there's four red bikes in the race and just one blue one of mine. <laughs> and Gassito's riding the blue bike. So, a red bike will still win. <laughs> right now, Vince Coleman setting the pace, getting out early on the first lap. Oftentimes, though, drafting is an important factor, and here putting on a kick on the outside is Greg Foster. So Foster takes the lead as they come down the straightaway on the first lap. Twice around this quarter mile track, 880 yards, a half mile. That blue bike in last place with uh, Mark Gaston, though, you're right, Amon. I told you. Mm. On, Pressure Walker is in fourth place, but he is a kick rider with those powerful legs, piston drive. He can make up a lot of ground fast, and he's starting to put on a charge now. That's Herschel Walker on the outside. He passes Vince Coleman. He's challenging Greg Foster. As they come to the final turn, it is Foster and Walker. And down the final straight, here comes Herschel Walker with a tremendous display of power as he rides home the victor in the bike race. And he won it in superstar record time. His time was under 110, 109.61. Herschel Walker gets 10 points and all of a sudden is very much a contender for the overall championship. Mark Gastineau was second. Followed by Roger Craig, Greg Foster, and Vince Coleman. Herschel Walker came all the way from the fourth position to pass the field. First he takes on Vince Coleman. And then around the corner, it's Greg Foster that he sets his sights on. And he's got that good straight power to come around the corner, down the straightaway. And it's Herschel Walker with a brand new record. Tremendous effort by Walker, under 110. This record had stood for 10 years before Herschel Walker's performance today. And Ahmad is with the winner now. All right, Herschel, your strategy really played off there. Well, Joe Casino, who's one of the trainers I brought down, and I also got Scott Tenley, uh trainer to work with me some, and they told me that I had to try to stay back on the first lap because the, the guys are real keyed up. They're ready to go out and at least go at the track. So I knew if I can stay back with them and kick them in the, final that I win it. Well, I tell you what, Greg Foster had a great pace because you just set a new superstar record. Well, he did. He went out very fast and 
at one time I said, well, let me just try to get second. Then I've always have known that the Lord always wants you to try your best. <laughs> so I went at it. All right, there's no place second. There's only a first place. Yeah, that's true. There's no such thing as second. You're only second if you think you're second. All right, congratulations, man. Thank you. Herschel Walker, one of the greatest competitors I've ever seen. He laughs and jokes before an event, but when it comes time to put on the game face, there's nobody better, whether it's bike racing or running a football. His 10 points for winning bike racing now puts him in second place behind Gastineau overall. Foster was disappointed when it was over. It didn't go as well as I thought it could. I didn't think anybody would be able to have that much strength left. I thought I'd just uh, go out quick and bring it on in. And uh, everybody had a lot more strength than I thought they had. But it went okay. I'm happy with it anyway. I'm always so glad it's over. I haven't ever felt the amount of pain in any kind of training that I felt on the second lap. It's probably the worst pain that I've ever felt in my life. In fact, I think I had a couple of tears in my eyes. Oh. We'll be back with more of the Superstars competition right after this. With the Madras shot and Jimmy Seppolo, this is Don Cricky on Key Biscayne in Miami. Warming up for the half mile is Scott Tinley. For Scott, a half mile seems like a walk in the park. Tinley is a triathlete and has been competing in that grueling sport since 1976. Triathletes compete in a 2.4-mile swim. Then, in a 112-mile bike race, they finish with a 26-mile marathon. In 1982, Scott first won the Hawaii Ironman Championship. And in 1985, he won the event a second time. In 1985 alone, he competed in 23 triathlons and won 12. During the past 10 years, he has placed in the top three positions in over 100 triathlon competitions. And so it would seem that Scott Tinley would be a very definite favorite in the Superstars half-mile run. We have completed seven of the ten events in the finals of the Superstars, and right now, Mark Gastineau, a former champion, is our leader with 34 points. But over the years, the Superstars has developed a series of come-from-behind winners, and Herschel Walker could be in a position to do that, to come from behind. We're coming up now to the eighth event, the half-mile run. It is twice around this quarter-mile oval. The heat could be a factor as this race wears on. Let's meet the field. There's Willie Galt, the terrific receiver and sprinter of the Chicago Bear, who is a collegian of Tennessee, was an NCAA champion in two indoor events. Scott Tinley can handle a half mile. He surely did in the preliminaries when he won his event. Gary Anderson can handle any athletic endeavor, the San Diego Charger receiver runner. Vinny Testaverde has been the best of the quarterbacks in the Superstars this year. Greg Foster, the hurdler, is also ready, although he indicates right now he's a little bit whipped. Now, the big story here is that Willie Gall realizes he's got to win the next three events to stay in contention for the championship. And they're in succession, so it should be very difficult for him. It takes a lot of work to win a half mile, a hundred yard dash, and then go into the obstacle course. Well, I gave him my old pregame speech beforehand, but I don't know if it's going to work against Kenley because we saw what he can do. Scott Tinley will be the rabbit in the race. He's got to try and gain enough of a lead to help hold off the sprinters at the end of the race. Tinley set a very fast pace in winning the preliminary half mile that he ran in. Willie Galt running second right now, and Testa Verde of big, easy striders holding third. And there goes Greg Foster. What's he doing? <laughs> Stopping. <laughs> That's not such a bad idea. He picks up one point for just starting the race anyway. We've talked a lot about Galt and Tinley, but what about Testa Verde? He's hanging in there with him, too. It's only the first lap, though, in my due time. You know, this is a very strategical race. Tinley is trying to run down Willie Galt, trying to set the pace so fast that he'll just drag back, and that way he ends up winning the race, but Willie's hanging right in there. Which is surprising for a spreader. This is a long-distance event for Willie Galt, and Testa Verde was a relative unknown factor coming in, but he's proved to be very strong if they go into the second half of the race now. And Gary Anderson isn't out of it yet. He's got a big kick, too. He's got a very strong finish as well. Right now, Scott Tinley has extended his lead as they come down the back stretch on the final lap. Willie Galt's going to have to put out a tremendous kick to catch him, and Testaverde seems to be losing a little steam. Tinley, he really knows.
knows that he doesn't want this race to come down to a sprint because he can't beat Willie in a sprint. But if he can get a big enough lead and hold it, he can win it. Well, we've got another contestant. I think I saw Greg Foster sneak back onto the track. <laughs> a little like Rosie Ruiz who took the subway during the New York City Marathon. <laughs> That's a bad idea. <laughs> Metro rail in Miami. <laughs> Only illegal if you get caught. Now they come down to the final straight. Scott Tinley trying to hold on. And here comes the kick of spinner Willie Galt. And it looks like Galt's going to get it. He does. And Willie Galt blows across the line as the winner of the half mile run. Tinley, who led almost all the way, is second. A tremendous effort by Willie Galt and a 10 point pickup for him on the scoreboard. And right now, he's in contention to win the overall title. But I think at the moment, Amad, he's hurting. Down, I think that hurt is a result of the ultimate effort that Willie gave in this half-mile run. Because he knew going into this race that he had to win this race. And, you know, running that fast of a pace and having to come from that far behind has got to take its toll on you. I think that was a, that was just a great uh, athletic performance by Willie. Well, it showed a great deal of guts. Remember, he's got the 100 coming up and then the obstacle course, but he knows he has to do one thing, that's win. He puts on the burst, and he does it. You talk about heart. I mean, this is the epitome of heart. When coaches talk about heart, guts, all of those corny things, this is what it's all about right here. A great deal of determination. He came from a long way back, a good athlete with a lot of heart. And as you look at the results, let's go to Ahmad with the winner. You know, I knew you weren't going to let me down, man. Well, that was a strong race. Come on, I'm almost dead. I don't know what, what I'm doing. I'm killing myself here. Yeah, but I'm telling you, you, I know you wanted to try to keep the guy just far enough that you could yeah. catch him if it came down to a sprint. I didn't think I could get him at 200. I just said, I got to go for it. I got to win. Just put my head down. And, uh, that's that football instinct, though, you know? You got to go out and do your best, put, grit your teeth. Bite your tongue and do everything else, so. That's right. And you never say die. Even though you got another event right. coming up, you get it together and That's you right. keep going, babe. Huh? Just until the fat lady sing and she's yeah. somewhere around. No, no, no. She ain't even tuning up. She ain't even tuning up. Another interesting aspect of this race was the performance of Greg Foster. He dropped out on the first lap. Here he is dropping back in to complete the race. He knew he'd get one point for starting the race. And that's all he'll get. Foster did come across the finish line, but everybody knew he only ran half a race. But Greg Foster, when he runs especially the hurdles, is one of the best in the world. He's with them on now. All right, Greg, what, what, uh, what, what were you doing? <laughs> Basically, I just wanted to get to one point. That was about it. She told me I had to start the race, so I decided to start. And the guys, I pulled off over there, and the guys set a little screen for me. And I jumped back in the race, and they came back on the second lap. <laughs> I thought you, if you got in front, we'd have thought you won the thing. <laughs> I started to, but I said, no, I wouldn't be a good sportsman. Like, so I let me stay behind and just give the guys some encouragement. So I told Gary and Vinny to, 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 to pick it up a little bit. That was about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Thanks a lot. All right. And now, after eight events, Gastineau still the leader, with Herschel Walker running second. But a very major factor with that last event was the 10 points Willie Galt got. He jumped into fifth place. And Willie's a man with a two-sport athletic career, and that's left him with some fond memories. I'm there. I'm here. Well, I guess uh, being a dual athlete, I have a couple. Uh, number one probably would be uh, the Super Bowl victory with my four catches for 129 yards in the Super Bowl and, uh, to help us win the Super Bowl championship. Of course, Super Bowl is the ultimate as far as football goes, so very high as you can go. And track and field, my 13.26, which was the fastest time in the world that year, 1983, in a national sports festival against Greg Foster. It's probably my most memorable track experience, along with the Olympics. We'll be back with more of the Superstars competition right after this. A year ago, Willie Galt, striding down the middle of the track, set the Superstars record in the 100-yard dash with perfect mechanics, head not moving, he stepped across the line in 9.35 seconds. All right, now, these are two of the fastest men in the world, not only football, but in the world. And this rivalry goes back quite a ways. You guys have run against each other before. High school. Yes, uh, since both of us are from the state of Georgia, we've had to uh, compete against each other in Georgia, and then uh, with Willie being at Tennessee, and I'm at Georgia, had to compete against each other again in SEC. And you know, it seemed like... Uh, 
you know, like I said the other day, when you want to compete against the best, you got to find people like Gold and Green and all them, and that's what's going to help you out. But this is what makes it fun. I mean, this is what athletics is all about, a nice rivalry like this. This is it. I mean, on a day like today, I mean, either one of us is going to win. Whoever's ready, whoever's mentally ready and physically ready, and also who's just on today. And uh, you're going to see in about nine seconds who that will be. Hey, good luck, you guys. I'm excited about this. This is going to be neat. It is exciting, and I, too, are the fastest men in America ready to compete in the 100-yard dash final of the Superstars. Also in the field is big number 99 from the New York Jets, Mark Gastineau. He's not expected to win. He's just in to get a point. Right now, he's the overall point leader in Superstars, but he's going to be challenged now. Willie Galt coming on strong. This is his best event. He's in lane two next to Gastineau. Right next to Willie, Herschel Walker, his longtime rival. It is expected to be a two-man race, although there's a lot of speed with Gary Anderson. He's turned to 9,500. In lane, five, in lane five, another fleet player, the St. Louis Cardinal, the man who stole 100 or more bases his first two seasons in Major League Ball, Vince Coleman. With the men to watch, in the red, Willie Galt to the right, and Herschel Walker. This has got to be the best 100 final ever in superstar competition with these two guys. Good start. Walker takes the lead down the middle of the track. Willie Galt running second. Anderson third. Now Willie Galt starts to move up a bit. They come to the tape. It is Herschel Walker and Willie Galt. A photo for the win. As the two great competitors in the state of Georgia take it to the wire almost in a dead heat. Well, it's tough to call. I, I don't know what I would call watching the tape from this angle. It's very difficult to tell who won the race. Herschel Walker got out very quickly, but Willie Galt comes right at the end. He makes up about a full stride over the last half of the race, and right at the wire, it's hard to tell who wins from that angle. It looks like Herschel Walker to me at that point. I would say Herschel, although Willie does have an excellent lean at the end. But it He'll looks like it. the tape hits, hits uh, Herschel first. Well, they don't know either. Willie Galt walking over now. The commissioner is Bob McElwee, and he makes the official ruling on it. The tape does not count. Replays of tape can only give us a better look. It is a live call by the official. And the live call was made by Bob McElwee. He says that Willie Galt won Willie Galt won it. Here's another look now as we watch in slow motion replay. Herschel Walker with half a stride lead on Willie Galt, who's in the inside lane. As they come to the tape, Walker leans and Galt leans, and it looks like just about a dead heat. Commissioner McElwee, your decision on the last race. Jim, as commissioner, I had accepted the responsibility of calling number one in the race. I had assigned the responsibility to call the number two runner to an experienced track official. I also had an experienced official to call the number three man. I was kneeling on the finish line with my number two caller. When the athletes came across the finish line, I clearly and decisively declared Galt the winner by sight. My second caller called Walker second. That is the way the race was called on the finish line. That is the way the finish will be ruled. And there is nothing to uh, change my ruling. My ruling will stand as called. All right, Willie Galt the winner of the 100-yard dash. Thank you, Commissioner. Well, I'd, I'd have to say that 100 lived up to its bill, and you guys were neck and neck at the finish line, but we've already heard the commissioner rule, and he ruled, Herschel, that you lost the race. Ah, uh, yes, you know, uh, he's a commissioner, as you uh, may say. You know, whether he's right or wrong, you got to go with what he says, and, you know, I'm not going to complain about it. Uh, if he ruled like that, I'm upset about it. You know, I'm very upset about it, but, you know, I think it was a very good race, and I think that's why they held, uh, you know, the superstars to have uh, some great competition, which I think they did. Well, Willie, having looked at that tape, it looks to me as if Herschel won the race. Well, I'm not. Without professional equipment here, it's, it's very difficult to determine that. Uh, without the accurate track here, and that's what we needed today, uh, you won't be able to determine that because of the pole that was there and the way the camera angle was. Uh, from the replay, it, it looked as if it was just too close to call from my standpoint, and the commissioner had him and himself and someone else down to make the call at the wire, and they thought I leaned in by a shoulder, uh, which I'm not really sure. Well, everybody out there will see this replay and they'll talk about this forever, because this definitely will be some controversy. <laughs> All right, good luck to you guys in the next event. Just what you like. Well, I, well, I, I would have preferred to hear it done another way, but you guys get it together. All right. 
Despite the controversy, the results are official. Willie Gault is the winner of the 100-yard dash. He gets 10 points. And now the standings after nine events show Mark Gastineau with 35 points. Herschel Walker is right in second place. And Willie Gault is third as we've come to the final event. The Superstars Obstacle Course. The championship will be decided here. The Superstars record for the obstacle course was set by Willie Galt one week ago. Willie running in the near lane covered the course in 21.37 seconds, so he has to be the favorite today in the final. We come to the final event of the Superstars competition and the most difficult, the obstacle course, which begins with this 12-foot wall. The point leader through nine events is Mark Gastineau, but he has completed his competition. The story here, Herschel Walker and Willie Galt. Depending on what they do, either could come from behind and win the Superstars. For more on the course, let's go to Jimmy Cephalo. The obstacle course begins with the most intimidating factor of the entire event, this 12-foot wall. Players grab a rope, scale up the top, and then jump down the other side. It is then into this tunnel as quickly as possible. The players will scale through it, crab along if they'd like to, try to get a little bit of speed in order to hit this blocking sled. The most difficult part of the blocking sled is trying to keep it in a straight line. If you don't do that, it'll go to a little bit of an angle, and the players will lose some time. A little bit of a break here, some speed if at all possible, and into these tires. The tires, you run through them as quickly as you can. Another football type event, which will aid some of the football players in this event. Then there's a little bit of time for some speed. The sprinters will be aided here. Run all the way down where Ahmad Rashad is standing at the water. Ahmad? All right, thanks, Jimmy. Now, here comes the easy part. They have to jump over the water jump. Then they jump over the high jump bar right here. Some guys will hurdle it. Other guys will do a flip over it. Then you get up and negotiate these next two hurdles, one right through the finish line, where I will be waiting to discuss success or failure. Jimmy? Well, you can still win this competition, but you've got to get into the finals in order to do so. Well, I think what I have to do is attack. I can't be tentative. I can't uh, not be aggressive. I have to be aggressive and uh, go out and do it, and the best man is going to win, hopefully. You've set the record uh, in the preliminaries. I guess you're not going to change your strategy whatsoever. I just got to go and run, Jim. I got to attack, and uh, I have to do my best and go out and go for it. Right, good luck. All right. Willie Galt, the record holder, and he'll be going against Scott Tinley in the first race of the finals. problems with the wall. He just wants to survive the course. Willie Gold's out to conquer it. Willie knows he's got to win to stay in contention here for the championship. And he's being very careful going through the tires. He doesn't want to miss one to pick up any penalty points. He is impressive. Look at him stride the high bar and take the hurdles. Bang, bang, and Willie Gold to the line of a very fine time. And Mrs. Gold and daughter Shakira both like it. <laughs> I think Tilly likes that water because he stepped in it every time he puts the course. He's gaining on it. Scott Tinley does finish. Here's a mod. Well, Willie, I'm telling you, you ran that race like you uh, you know you got to win this thing to stay in the contention for the top. I have to, Mark. I can't be a turn to, I have to attack, 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 and be aggressive. And I had to there. Well, it looks like you're getting used to running this course because you got it down pat. Yeah. My main thing is I have to take chances. I know my chances are going to work, so I just have to go out and thank God for it. You look really good at that hurdling that high jump like I showed you. That's right. Thank you, <laughs> And his time looked real good, too, Ahmad. 23.27 seconds. Now Herschel feels the pressure. He's with Jimmy. Herschel, this competition is yours to win. All you have to do is take this obstacle course. Uh, yes, it is. It's, uh, you know, it's a big task, but uh, I've always said life is challenging. So this is going to be a challenge. I just got to go out and see if I can accept that. Going against Willie Galt, uh, after all, this entire competition, it seems to be you against Willie in a lot of different facets. Uh, must give you some great pride to know that there's somebody out there who has the same type of ability. Yes, it's a lot of pride because, uh, you know, the United States is a great place to live. When you got people competing against each other with the same amount of ability, you can only strive to be, very, be at your very best. And I think that's what the law I mean for everybody to do is to go out and try to be his very best. Okay, good luck. Todd Worrell will run against Herschel Walker. And I think Todd's running for second in this race. As Herschel powers his way over the 12-foot wall. Actually, Worrell beat him over it. Let's see him hit this sled, though. That's where Herschel puts a load on that. And his quick feet 
Take Herschel Walker through the tires and on now to the high jump. Very important not to foul, and he does not. He's over. Just the hurdles remain. And Herschel Walker hits the line with a very good time. Admiral bringing up the rear in this race. Nice one, nice one, nice one. You knew what you had to do. You knew what you had to do. You came in and did it very strong. Well, thank you. I uh, knew I had a big task with the wall and try to take it head on because that's all you got to do. You got a lot of great competition here. Just got to go out and try to win. Well, next year when the Cowboys get down about the three-yard line, I guarantee you, you're going up over the top after watching you go over that high jump. Ball. Well, you know, I had to make it over, and I tried to. <laughs> All right, man. Good luck to you. And for Superstars rookie Todd Worrell, it was a big effort. Couldn't ask any more out of myself, I don't think. I, some of the events, you know, if you have good days on, you do well. But I'm very pleased with uh, the points I've been able to earn. And... Had a tiring four days, but it was fun. Whew. Man, am I glad it's over. Morell did well, but Herschel Walker and Willie Galt had the best times. More obstacle course coming up. Back at Key Biscayne, Florida, the 1987 Superstars continues with the final event, the obstacle course. The two best times so far belong to Willie Galt and Herschel Walker. We come to race three now. Gary Anderson of the San Diego Chargers is one of the competitors. The other, another skilled athlete, Greg Foster, a hurdle champion. They both should do some damage to the wall. Up and over. <laughs> no problem there. Damage. Foster has a little bit of trouble negotiating after he gets over the wall. Anderson with lightning quick feet. Taking a big lead now. Very important not to foul. Over the water jump. Oh, over the high jump. A unique way to get over that high jump. Greg Foster gets to the line first. They both had fouls on the course, though. We're going to look back on the replay. Gary Anderson had a problem with the water jump. And Greg Foster knocked down the high bar. Five-second penalties. Here's the replay. And well, Anderson must have a slight problem. I think his toe went over the line on the water jump, but he had no problem getting over this high jump bar, just coming down. Yeah, the takeoff was fine. The landing was terrible, though. <laughs> and on the right side there, you see Greg Foster hitting the bar with his right foot. So their times don't come close to what was registered by Willie Gold and Herschel Walker. Time to beat so far, Herschel Walker's 24.34 to get in the final. Willie Gall with the best time. He's hoping someone will catch Herschel Walker, knock him out of the finals. We'll see if Vinny Testaverde can do it. Odds are against him. He's running unopposed here, Jimmy. I don't think he's had any threat to Herschel Walker or Willie Gall right now, especially the way he's been over that wall. Watch out for the rope there, Vinny. Don't hurt yourself. Well, Vinny's doing all right, though. He's doing fine. A lot better than you or I do. <laughs> He's a very good athlete. 6'5", 220 pounds. Well, you got to bring that second leg up, Vinny. <laughs> He's got to leave the hurdling to the hurdlers, I think. What a good kid. It's been fun to be around him all week. Yeah, as well as Herschel Walker and all the contestants, actually. We'll be back with more of the obstacle course in a moment. We're back at the concluding event of the 1987 Superstars, the obstacle course. The two best times go to the final. Right now on the right, Willie Galt has the best time, 23.27 seconds. But Herschel Walker could be in position to win this if no one catches him. He has the second best time, 24.34 seconds. Now we come to the fifth race, competing Roger Craig of the San Francisco 49ers. And yeah, Vince Coleman of the St. Louis Cardinals. You know, Don, it appears to me that Coleman's put on a little weight since last year. He was a little thinner and a little quicker last year. He was very strong in this event last year. Almost beat Ronaldo Mnei, who was the eventual champion for a fourth time, a record. With the wall they go, and Vince Coleman has no problem. I may have spoke too soon. He looks <laughs> awfully quick right he's now. still pretty quick. Like I said, you know, he's still quick. He can play some football, too. He bangs the sled, goes through the tires. No foul there. None there. Good flip turn over the high bar. Craig knocks it down. Here's the hurdles. On to the line. Good run by Vince Coleman. It was his time good enough to catch Herschel Walker. It was not. Vince Coleman just misses catching Herschel Walker. Coleman's time is 24.78 seconds. Herschel Walker gets to the finals with 24.34. 
and thereby wins the championship by just getting to the finals. It's an automatic seven. He could do no worse than second. And Herschel Walker, after the disappointing finish in the 100, comes back to reign as Superstars champion. They will run the final heat, although it's anticlimactic now. Willie Galt, the near lane, cannot win the overall event, even if he wins the obstacle course. They've been going head-to-head -head for the entire competition. It'll be interesting to see how they react now that the entire competition is over. They've been going head-to-head -head all the way back to high school back in Georgia. The first will pick up time on the tires. Yeah, but you've got to have a lot of time when Willie Galt gets to the hurdles. There they go. Oh, that's, that's history. Willie Galt wins the battle. He takes the event, but Hersha Walker wins the war. He takes the Superstars title of 1987. All right. All right, boy. I'm telling you, you guys have made this event. I'm not kidding. I, I really, this has been exciting just to be around you guys. Willie, nice run. Thank you. Uh, anytime you get Hersha, you have to run nice. Right, Hersha, you are our overall winner, and I must say, you are truly a superstar. Well... I think everyone here today is super strong because they competed well. And, you know, I think it proved that they're superstars when it come down to the wider side of winner. Well, a good thing, this will probably spill over to the football field, but you both are on the field at different times, so well, that might not be too bad. Well, I just think we both have God-given talent, and we go out and we exemplify what athletes should be, and just go out and compete our best for the fans out there who pay the tickets and buy the tickets and who come out and watch us, and we just really appreciate that. After watching this whole competition, I've been thinking about issuing a challenge. <laughs> Not me. I got a friend at home. Right? I want to do it. Congratulations, guys. All right. Ten great athletes here today, and all of them superstars. And so the National Football League stands tall in this year's superstars competition with the top three finishers coming from the NFL, led by Dallas Cowboy Herschel Walker, a young man who says he thrives on the competitive fire, and he certainly proved his mettle in this event coming from behind to win You know what, Don, a long time ago when I was playing for the Minnesota Vikings, Fran Tarkenton told me that we got a kid down in Georgia, a high school kid that's a true superstar. You know what he was talking about? Herschel Walker, and he showed that today. I enjoy the competition between Willie Galt and Herschel Walker. You can tell they really enjoy going at each other. They were competing along in each event. The winner today was Herschel Walker, but I don't know. I have a feeling Willie Galt will be back again next year, and they'll look forward to competing one more time for the title of the best athlete in the country. Now for Jimmy Cephalo and Ahmad Rashad, this is Don Crickey. Glad you could be with us at the 1987 Superstars. Herschel Walker, our champion. Remember, Sunday, May 17th.